The following video demonstrates how to use the River Cross Sections tool in Enforce. If I begin by going to this model, it's already been prepared for us, and zooming in, we can see a series of uh, section locations, and if I zoom into one of them, we can see essentially a series of surveyed points and a baseline, a theoretical baseline. We also have points dotted along it, which are the left bank, the water level and the right bank point. Now we'll see at a later date that these uh, additional detail points are entirely optional and are perhaps only necessary if you want to run a long section. So river cross sections in Enforce work by projecting a theoretical baseline onto a surveyed feature that's actually been collected in the field. Obviously it's very impractical to try and walk in a perfectly straight line so what Enforce actually does at the time of the river sections is project these features that have been collected in the field as you can see there's one here, onto the baselines. Now the baselines can be theoretical locations or known changes or can just be sketched manually. What is important though is that the number of each string that's being collected in the field corresponds exactly with the baselines that run next to them. This is how Enforce knows which points to project onto which features. Same is also true if I do a point query for the right bank point. Here we go, RB8 and it'll also be the same for the water level points. When we run the river cross sections, Enforce can extract the colours for our, from our features automatically. I'm just going to make sure my water level is set up properly. Now obviously it's a point, but when it comes to be drawing on a section it actually will draw a line. So I'm going to enable the line and I'm just going to set its colour to be blue. So hopefully when we take our cross sections, Enforce will use this colour automatically and we won't have to change any settings. So OK that and OK that. So for zoom to extents, as we can see, all our section locations here are ready to go. We go up to sections, come down to river cross. So Enforce begins by asking us which codes do you want to use to define your baseline. In our situation we've used BL. Obviously they're numbered in the field, so we've got BL 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. But obviously the code is still BL. The same is also true for the left bank, the right bank and the water level points. Or as I said earlier, these three codes are entirely optional. They are not necessary for the cross sections. However, if you want to do a long section through your cross sections, they are generally advisable. What is important though is that you tell Enforce which codes you wanted to extract um, in terms of which points do you want to project onto the baselines. So as we saw earlier, we definitely had some hard beds in there and there are in fact also some soft beds in there as well. They'll be numbered just the same as the baselines. If I press OK now, Enforce extracts, or rather Enforce goes hunting for the baselines and tells us which ones it's found. And if I press OK, it'll extract those points, project them onto the baselines automatically for us, and show it to us in the preview. Here we have BL1, i.e. 1 of 18. And if I press the next button, we can see 2, 3, 4, and so on. If we go far enough down we should start seeing some, here we go, yeah, we have some soft bed points. So even though we've only put the hard bed and the soft bed in there, lots of clients also extract perhaps bridge soffits, edges of walls and all sorts of other detail they collect in the field, all of which can be projected onto these theoretical baselines during the river sections process. So to plot these we just close it as we would do a normal cross section, I'll we'll call it river sections, and press OK. And then to plot them, we need to go into a CAD model. So I'll come out of here, go to CAD, and do new, call this river sections, press OK, go to the camera, I'm going to zoom out so I've got plenty of room to plot them, go to tools, come down to sections, plot, multi, just as we would do for ordinary cross sections, press OK, I want to plot all of them, so I'm going to say all, OK to that. I'm going to keep my horizontal and vertical scales the same and I'm going to use the height based method so that we can get a, an even amount of space above and below the sections. I'm going to defaults, so set those to white so we get a sensible colour around our box. Everything else appears to be okay. So I'm just going to draw a box now to fit our cross sections in. As far as uh, I'm obviously zoomed out quite a long way so that's why the preview looks very small. So I'll have two columns which obviously equals nine rows. 25mm between them horizontally and vertically. 
I'm going to press OK and force them draws those for us. As you can see, BL1, the water level is annotated for us, and here's all the points that were collected in the field. All we need now to do is to go to File, Export, and we can send it straight to a DXF. Obviously, though, that's the long. Uh, sorry. Obviously, those are the cross sections. We still have the uh, long section to do. So if I close that down, go back to my ordinary model, go to sections, and come down to river long. I've only taken one set of sections so far, so it's obviously easy to choose this one. And now it's asking us what information do we want to see in our long section. We know that we have hard bed and soft bed, but we can also choose left bank, right bank, and water level if we had it available. Obviously, we did for this example. We saw that earlier, so I'll move them over. We then have to choose how our chainage is calculated between each of our section locations. So in other words, where is the centre line? We can obviously say it's midway between the left bank and the right bank points, or we can say actually it's the lowest point on the river, i.e. the lowest point on the section. There's also an option that says CHN equals. This allows us to actually extract dimensions that were stored on the baselines during the survey time and move them into an exact location obviously which would allow us to account for bends in the river and so on and so on. But at the moment we're just going to say lowest point. We'll come back and explore the other options later. I'll say update changes as well so that it recalculates the positions of the baselines automatically. And press OK. Now if we zoom in, we can see the various profiles here. I'll just modify the colors. So the hard beds in red. I'm going to make that brown the moment. Soft bed, keep that as green. The left bank, let's have that in white. Right bank, magenta, and obviously the water level is in blue because we set that up in the code table earlier. Press OK to that. There we go. And there's the brown hard bed, and there's the water level, and here's the banks. So if I close that down, I call this one long section, river long section press OK. And we can now plot that in exactly the same way as you would do an ordinary long section. Tools, sections plot single. Obviously I want the long section now. I'll say the lowest level in my section is 1. And let's go up to 12 so we've got lots of room. Everything else should be good. So I press OK. Once a layer name as usual. I'll drop the section down. And there we go. There's our section extracted automatically from our cross sections. And that concludes simple river sections in Enforce. Please, however, see the second example in river sections, which will go into a little bit more detail how baselines can be set up before the cross sections are taken and also some more advanced features in terms of the long section.